Hey guys, I'm Captain Mike Roy with Real Cash Charters, and today we're, we're going to be talking about spring striped bass fishing in the back bays, rivers, and estuaries. A uh, couple baits we're going to be using uh, jerk baits and paddle tails. So, a jerk bait um, made by Zoom Fluke that I like is a 7 inch Zoom Super Fluke. Uh, another one made by Big Bite Baits, this is a 6 inch jerk bait, both pretty similar. Um, I also like using paddle tails. Uh, especially at night, I like these paddle tails. These are made by Kytec. Um, they vibrate uh, pretty well because of the paddle tail. They also have these ridges um, down the body of the bait, which gives off a lot of vibration in the water. So I do uh, favor these at night. Um, <clears throat> for jig heads, it's very important that you match the appropriate size jig head with the bait you're going to be using. So these jig heads are made by Bomber. They're round jig heads, half ounce and three eighths ounce size. Um, they have these grip cones on them, which are really good because they hold the bait and prevent it from slipping down, but they also don't tear the bait. If you use too large of a, of a hook on these small baits, they're actually gonna split the bait and tear it. So um, and if you're using a bigger bait, you'd be using uh, you know bigger hook and it's gonna have bigger uh, barbs on it. Um, <clears throat> These hooks are, there's, these are a thin wire hook, which is good for these baits because they don't split them. However, if you get into uh, bigger fish, like in the late spring where there's some bigger fish, you're fishing some heavier drag, fish are in the current, um, these hooks could definitely bend open. So you want to, uh, at that point, you want to upgrade to a larger hook and probably fish a larger bait with that, with that bigger hook. Um, <clears throat> so let's look at rigging these baits. Most important thing when we rig these baits is that they're on the hook and they sit straight. Okay, if they're crooked on there and they have a bend to them, they're going to spiral in the water and not going to be very effective. So in order to do that, um, before I hook it, I'm going to line the lead head up on the top of the bait and I'm going to see where the hook, where the bend in the hook comes out. Okay, I'm going to put my thumb there and mark it with the hook point. So now I know where I'm going to come out with my bait. Next thing that's uh, very important is that I go through the center of the bait, okay? So I'm going to center it, and as I come in, I'm going to make sure I stay nice and centered and find my mark that I just made, and I'm going to come out right where that mark is, okay? I'm going to slide the bait up over those grips. Um, you don't have to do this, but if you want to add some crazy glue, do so now. That will help the bait stay on a little bit longer when you're catching fish. Now. Go ahead and finish, um, slide it all the way up so it sits nice and flush against the lead head. Okay, and you see the bait is nice and straight and centered very nicely. I know this is going to swim uh, properly in the water. Uh, another little trick you can do with the uh, zoom flukes, the ends are kind of tapered. So what I'll do is I'll take a razor blade, just cut off about a quarter of an inch. And what that does is it'll give you a nice flush uh, surface there so your jig head would sit nice and flush against the bait uh, just like I did right here you can see the jig head is nice and flush nice and straight on the uh, um, with the bait okay um, when I'm attaching these baits to my line I use a clip this is a clip made by breakaway or tactical anglers it's the smallest clip they make it's rated at 50 pounds plenty strong enough these clips will not open up unlike other clips that will open up when you hook a big fish. So these are really strong, makes changing the baits really easy, uh, quickly and efficient, okay? My bait's on. Uh, due to the rounded ends, it will not um, have a negative impact on the swimming of the bait. It actually helps the bait swim freely, okay? So um, really good. And changing it, you wanna change to a different style bait or a lighter size jig head, it's easy as that. It takes me a second. Also easy to do in the dark. Um, I can pretty much do it without looking at it. Um, using 40 or 50 pound monofilament or fluorocarbon leader material to a barrel swivel. And then that's attached to my main run line. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you check out some of my other videos that are going to be coming out soon. Hey guys, we're going to turn over to some live footage now. As you can see here, we're fishing the jigs, and uh, right there I'm keeping the rod tip pretty low to the water. Uh, it was very windy this day, so by keeping the rod tip low to the water, it helps to eliminate the bow in the line. I'm working the jig fairly slowly, and you're going to see me reeling in a second, but it's a very slow retrieve. 
We are fishing in about 15 to 20 feet of water. I'm using a half ounce jig. There you see the retrieve speed. Very slow and I'm using some very slight rod twitches. <clears throat> you do get a lot of hits as the jig falls so it is good to occasionally incorporate some pauses into your retrieve. However, don't drop your rod tip really quick when you're snapping it. If you come down too quick, you're going to put slack in the line and when that fish hits it, you're going to uh, miss the hit. So you always want to maintain good contact with the jig. <clears throat> um, during the retrieve, like I said, sometimes you'll hit it when it falls, but you will feel a slight bump and just make sure you follow through with a good hard hook set. This is early spring, so we're fishing early April in Connecticut. These fish are relatively small fish, as you can see. We did get into some larger fish, but that was after dark. This is about an hour and a half before sunset, so most of the fish we're catching are on the smaller side here. For tackle, I'm using a uh, uh, seven and a half to eight foot rod, rated for half ounce to an ounce and a quarter, uh, paired with a quality spinning reel with 20 pound fire line. It's a braided line. I like the fire line. It seems to be a little bit tougher than some of the other braided lines. Again, you can see the retrieve speed is really slow. One of the most important things with jig fishing is that you have your jig in the strike zone. That means the jig has to be within two or three feet of the bottom. You don't want to be dragging bottom, uh, but at the same time, if your jig is riding up too high, if you're in the middle of the water column, it's going to be riding above the fish, and you're not going to catch many fish that way. So the trick is to, when you cast out, allow the jig to sink to the bottom, then begin a very slow retrieve with slight rod twitches. As I said earlier in the video, it was very windy this day, so we actually are using a drift sock here. The drift sock helps to slow the speed of the drift down because we had wind against tide, so it was really effective this day. It slowed our drift down to about 0.3 to 0.5 knots, which is really good for working these jigs. It's really difficult to fish these jigs when your boat's drifting really quickly. You see here I'm sharpening the hook. Um, we just snagged bottom and uh, dulled the hook point. So it's really important to keep a sharp hook. Obviously with a sharp hook you're going to get better hook penetration and hook a lot more fish like that. See, they're a very light take. Again, very important to stay in very good time, uh, contact with the lure and follow through with a good hook set. Well, thanks a lot for watching my video. I hope you guys subscribe to my YouTube channel and stay tuned for many more upcoming videos.